Andrews. So we are back inside the Robert J. Collins Arena. We've had some technical issues, and we welcome you back into opening night. Again, this is Brookdale taking on Harford Community College. The Owls, number one, or excuse me, Division One, number 20 in the country in Division One play, whereas Brookdale is Division Three. They are ranked number eight coming into this year. Harford has been able to handle Brookdale so far. They lead 24-11. However, Brookdale's been hanging tough with a very good team, but they've had a lot of turnover so far. Here is Francesca Venegas ahead of the field, lays it in with the left hand. It makes it now 26 to 11, and Coach Brunson is now going to take a timeout with 7-10 remaining here in the first quarter. Excuse me, in the second quarter. So Brookdale has... Struggled a little bit out of the gate, but nonetheless are hanging tough with a team that beat them last year, 127 to 39. And Coach Brunson going to want to talk things over as to what exactly they want to do. So we'll take a brief time out here on Brookdale TV. Come back after this. And we're back in the Robert J. Collins Arena, 7-10 remaining here in the second quarter. Tim Kettlefemmel alongside Brian Gadsworth here with you for another season. We were here last year, and we had a lot of fun. Both these two teams, the Brookdale men and women's teams, made and not only made the tournament, but won the Region 19 Conference. Yeah, Moving that was the, nationals. the uh, tournament that we had the pleasure of covering here last March where we saw both the women's and men's teams come out on top in their respective region championship games was a thrill to call the action there last game of the season. Brianna Bowen with the drive. The basket is good, and there's a foul, so Bowen will now go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. We'll check the foul. It's the first foul committed here in the second quarter. And they're going to call it on Adriana Jones. Bowen completes the three-point play. It's 26 to 14. Up ahead of the field is Venegas, not able to finish. Now an open three-pointer by Jones, rattles out, no good. And the rebound tracked down by Alexa Vreeland. Vreeland over to Chikasha Andrews, who's right in front of head coach Michael Sini for Harford. Andrews. Now over to Bowen. Bowen. Over to Bethany Burton. Now back out to Andrews with eight on the shot clock. Pass over to Alexa Espada. And now that pass is intercepted ahead of the field by Ryan Holder, who lays it in. Yeah, too easy for Holder. Nice defense, one into the floor, coming away with the steal, and then the long strides to the basket for that transition bucket. Bowen controlling the ball, almost had it swiped away there by Venegas in the left arc. Now Bowen trying to give it off to Chikashi Andrews. She does, 15 on the shot clock. Andrews guarded by Holder. Watching the shot clock tick down, it's now down to eight. Back over to Bowen in the left arc with five on the shot clock. Bethany Burton at the foul line with two. Burton spin around, jumper in the lane, doesn't fall, and the rebound brought down by Reed. Up ahead to Venegas. Venegas going baseline, and there'll be a foul on Bowen, actually. I thought Venegas may have carried that ball, but I think the foul came before that, so Bowen is going to be charged with her third foul. It's the first on Brookdale here in the second quarter with 5.35 remaining. 28-14, Harford leads. As you see the starting lineup there, actually that's just the Jersey Blues. That's all the players this year. No, Chikasha Andrews and Gianna Errico are the only two returning players on that team. 
So back in play, Ryan Holder now controlling the ball. Three there from Jones is off the mark. And Brookdale able to come away with it again, down by 14. Andrews now dribbling. Looking to go somewhere with it. Now over to Vreeland. Vreeland at the top of the arc. Hoists up a three. It's back iron no good. And the weak side rebound is tracked down by Venegas. Venegas up ahead to Red. Red in the lane. Traveled with the basketball. Yeah, and there was some contact as she came down with that pass down low. Thought they might get a foul call, but instead it's the travel, so it goes Brookdale's way, and now they've got to try to get something going on this end of the floor, cut into this deficit. Andrews tried to split a double team in the backcourt. That was Holder and Venegas, and there's a foul on Holder, I think. So we'll see, that. we'll check the number on Ryan Holder. That's going to be her second. Four forty-eight remaining here in the second quarter. Brookdale down by 14. Andrews throws it away, was looking for Vreeland. And then they'll go back to Harford. It was an area last year that Brookdale struggled in at different times of the year, and that was the turnover category. And this is a team that forced 43 turnovers. Talking about Harford, is this a nice three there made by Jones? who puts Harford up 31 to 14. This is a team that in their last game, their 1-0 this season, when they played Ann Arundel, when they won 97 to 26, which is a team out of Maryland, they forced 43 turnovers in that game alone. So they are certainly a team that goes after the ball, and Brookdale has struggled with it so far this evening. Approaching four minutes left here in the first half. 31-14, Harford leads. Andrews, a brick there from the three-point line, and a rebound pulled off the floor by Holder. Now in the lane, this is McCollum, and McCollum is fouled. Yeah, and I mean, any way you look at this matchup going, and you knew it was going to be a big-time challenge for Brookdale, not only are you facing a Division I team, but a Division I team that's been an elite group. I mean, last year they were 29-4, and four, one of the top teams in all the country. So it's a good measuring stick kind of game just to see where how you stack up against an elite group. So... Shawnkia McCollum at the line, hits the first foul. The foul is on Gianna Errico. That's her second personal. So McCollum now from the line, knocks both down. So it's now 33 to 14 with under four minutes to play here in the first half. Alexa Vreeland, Gianna Errico, now back to Vreeland, trying to handle that backcourt pressure that the Owls are applying. Vreeland along the baseline. Now takes a long three. It's an air ball, and it'll just roll out of bounds. Now you see the good defense that a good team plays like this Harford team. They're not allowing Brookdale to get to the basket. Everything is settling for outside jumpers. So far, Andrews, their leading scorer, hasn't gotten going. And if you shut down Brookdale's ability to score with Andrews, you're going to have a good chance to be successful. McCollum into red. Now back out to Jones. Holder with a right arc three. It's off the back iron, no good. Gianna Errico tracks down the rebound, but she throws it away as she was falling out of bounds. McCollum now, the floater inside is good. 35-14, Harford leads. Three minutes left here in the first half. Vreeland is bumped right along the baseline at midcourt by Destiny McQueen. So that's the first on McQueen. Brookdale will inbound. But Shikashi Andrews now with a fresh 30. Andrews guarded by Holder very tightly, man to man. Has nowhere to go with the ball. Now Andrews going to keep it herself. It's off the top of the backboard, no good. Up ahead, McQueen not able to handle the pass from McCollum. 
It'll be another turnover there. Brookdale will get the ball back, but they're going to have to start putting some offense together as slowly Harford is starting to pull away. Yeah, that pass was just far enough out of the reach for McQueen to be able to catch it and go up for a layup there. Vreeland is bumped, and you heard the slap all the way up here. She got hit in the face by Ryan Holder, and for Holder, that's her third foul, one of the better players on this team. So she's going to have to be careful. Yeah, and Holder, and now, yep. Holder got off to that good start with the eight points in the first quarter, so certainly one of the offensive weapons now in foul trouble, something to watch. Holder comes out. Tiana Swearinger comes back in for her. Holder on the bench with three fouls for Harford. 35-14, Harford leads 2-20 remaining here in the second quarter. Kamari Brown. Now over to Chikashi Andrews, rather, in the left arc. Shot clock down to seven. Andrews with five. Andrews with four. Floater off the glass, too strong, and the rebound pulled down for Harford. Up ahead to Jones. Jones right on Brown, blew the layup. Battle for it underneath, ball is still loose. Red comes up with it. McCollum thought about a three. Now over to McQueen who will pull the trigger on the three. It's too strong. Red and Malloy fighting for it. It's a jump ball and it'll go to Brookdale by virtue of the possession arrow. Yeah, and one thing that should be improved for Brookdale this season is the rebounding. That was an area where they really struggled last year. And not really through any fault of their own, just because they didn't have much size on the team. Now you can definitely see the difference in that category, and that should be something that makes them a better team this year. So Kamari Brown now dribbling. Guarded very tightly. Hand off to Erico. Erico to Burton. Now back to Brown, and a three seconds in the paint violation on Brookdale. I think that's going to be on Bethany Burton. So another turnover there as we're under 90 seconds left here in this first half. Owls holding a 35 to 14 lead. Reminds you, coming up next, after this game is concluded, we'll have the Brookdale men's team taking on the Hartford Community College Owls at 7 p.m. approximately. Three from the left arc by Swearinger is no good. Rebound red. Now back over to Jones. The nice jumper is in and out no good. Third chance opportunity here for the Owls as a nice rebounding job done underneath by Red. McCollum now into Red. The floater in the paint is good. Under a minute left. 37-14 now the score. And it has been a long drought offensively since this Brookdale team was able to put points on the board. They now find themselves down by 23. See if they can get a good shot here to close out the half. Shot clock is down to 15. Brookdale can't hold for the final possession. This is Andrews with the ball. Now over to Burton, who's at the foul line. Now back to Andrews with eight to shoot. Burton from the foul line. It's short. And now Hartford can hold for the last shot if they choose to. This is Swearinger. Swearinger going to go one on four in the paint. Had the shot blocked. Red, it's a two if it goes, and it does. 39-14. That might be the final play of the first half. Andrews going to have to hoist it up at midcourt. It's off the back rim. No good. Nice air underneath it, but at the end of one half of play, it'll be 39-14, the score, at the end of the first half. So certainly, Brookdale has a lot to work with and are going to try to get things together. Again, this is the opening match of this season for the Brookdale Jersey Blues. Very rare that they play a Division I school this early. However, last year they did. They did play Hartford. They lost 120, 127 to 39. As we welcome you back inside to the Robert J. Collins Arena, Tim Califemo alongside Brian Goudsworth. Again, we're back for another year. We're very excited for all the Brookdale basketball that we're going to have calling this year. And Brookdale coming off of the Region 19 title last year, but really Coach Brunson 
told us pre-game that this was going to be a true test of what his team actually has. Not near going to be the competition they're going to be facing this year on a regular basis, but certainly a good test to see where this team is with a lot of young players. Yeah, and he told us he's very confident in this group going into this season. It feels like a lot of new recruits, players who could make an impact this year. Of course, Andrew's returning along with Erico. Erico a chance to take the next step this year in her sophomore year. So there'll be some growing pains in a game like this. You certainly expect it when you're going up against a Division I team, an elite team, but we'll see if they can make some adjustments in the second half, make this game more competitive coming out in the second half. And we should mention Hartford Community College, the Owls on the women's side. Remember, they're Division I. In the NJCAA, they are ranked number 20th in the country, so they are certainly a very good team. They are up now at the end of the first half by a score of 39-14 to 14 over the Jersey Blues. We'll step aside for halftime, come back for the second half right after this on Brookdale TV. only student learning the Garden State Film Festival returns to Atlantic City March 31st through April 3rd 2016 don't miss the show purchase tickets at gsff.org hello my name is Jack Ryan and I teach English at Brookdale Community College the mask that I'm wearing here is simply a prop that I use in my American Lit One class when I teach Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Cask of Amontillado. In that short story, Poe utilizes masks both literally and metaphorically. And literature classes are meant to help students to analyze difficult texts, to break them down, and to understand what is really going on, not just explicitly, but implicitly as well to read between the lines. That skill translates to any discipline, as do the skills that we teach in our writing courses, where we teach you, we give you instruction on how to learn the tools of research, how to properly construct, focus, and organize a research paper. All of those skills that we work on in those courses help you, the student, to be a better student, to be more uh, appropriately employable, and to enjoy literature, film, poetry, any kind, of, any kind of resource that you might be interested in. Even listening to the radio and the lyrics on the songs that you hear on your typical FM station or bipod. We at Brookdale's English Department hope that you can contact us and look for the appropriate courses that work for your vision of what your life will be. And we hope that you do that as soon as you can and if you want to contact Jack Ryan just look up Jay Ryan on the English page 
and you'll find me and I would be glad to tell you what I know and learned in my 45 years at Brookdale Community College. Well, the semester is coming to an end, and students are either cramming for finals or stressing about what their next step is. But if you come across the Brookdale Bank Year Library, you'll find people who are willing to help you de-stress, relax, and clear your worried mind. Oh, and did I mention that these people were therapy dogs? Yeah, let's go check it out. Uh, my name's Tyara, and I'm here to pet some dogs and be not stressed. Dogs just have this, like, this peaceful aura. Petting them just calms me instantly. My name is Michelle Fields, and we're here with all the therapy dogs to help the students de-stress. Since she was six months old, she just had just a docile nature, and she loved people, and she especially loved kids, and she would let kids do anything to her, so we knew that she would be a great therapy dog. So I had the dream of taking her into the hospital and helping out sick kids, going to visit people, and so it took about six months of training, and she passed all her tests, and now we go regularly to Mammoth Medical. We visit the pediatric ward and the cardiac ward and we were invited to come here today. I think it's just a great way to get your hands on an animal and feel their love and energy and um, they just they bring a smile to everyone's face and they keep everyone calm. Um, just to see the student's face when they see him, it's just, it brings so much joy to my heart and his and he loves helping everyone. I just like dogs, they make me happy. <laughs> So how do you think this is helping you guys de-stress from the academic semester? Nice to take a break from everything and just get to hang out with somebody that just, all he does is want to make people happy. It's a good distraction and it is very relaxing to just be with a companion who just wants to be pet and have attention and love and give that back. My name is Brittany Harrison and um, this is my dog, my therapy dog Charlie and we're here helping students de-stress. Um, Charlie loves everyone and he, he usually always brings a smile to everyone's face. Well that's all the time we have here today because I'm going to be spending the rest of my day petting some pups. To learn more about events at Brookdale, visit our website at brookdalecc.edu. I'm Sophia Perola with Brookdale Television. Thanks for watching. Need a break from the vigorous academic year? Don't worry, you're not the only one. Hi, I'm Sophia Perola and I'm here at the Student Life Center where students are chilling out, drinking smoothies and hoping their finals go smoothly. What's your name? I'm Zaire. Zaire, I see you're drinking a smoothie. What smoothie is that? A uh, strawberry banana smoothie. It looks delicious. Oh, it is very scrumptious. Yes. How do you think it's helping you de-stress from the academic year? Well, uh, it's cold and uh, it relaxes my throat and it's like, you know, it's, it's very relaxing. You know, if I get a brain freeze, it'll stop me from doing homework. You know what I mean? So that's why it's, how it's relaxing, you know? Sounds successful to me. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy your smoothie. Thank you. Hi, can you tell me your name? My name is Lorena, hello. Hi Lorena, that's a beautiful name. Did you have a smoothie? Yes, I did, strawberry banana, it was so delicious. Do you feel de-stressed? Of course I do. Right now we're in uh, SLC, and on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we are here massaging the students, just giving them five minute chair and table massages. Um, a lot of students benefit from it. Once we come over here, usually, at we're signed up, we have a non-stop time that we're here. So we're usually here 11 to 2, and uh, it's beneficial for all the students. I think it's, uh, it's a really good idea, actually, to get the massage before the finals, because it's really relaxing, yeah. This feels amazing, just getting rid of the kinks and knots. I can see why this is anti-stress week. Thank you for joining us here at Brookdale Television, signing off. It's the week before finals here at Brookdale Community College, and students are running around hoping to pull together a big A on their final exam, but a few of them are here in the Bank Year Library choosing relaxation over stress by taking a step out of the student's life and into the dog's life. Well, this is an annual event that we do. Actually, we do it every semester. Uh, around exam time, it's therapy dogs in the library for students to come in and staff to, uh, just to 
have some fun to relax, pet the dogs, play with the dogs, and kind of relieve some stress. Oh, you are so cute. I'm so happy. High five. Oh, you're so cute. You know, everybody needs those study breaks, and it's a way to take a study break without having to get distracted at the same time. I mean, as soon as I go well, first in, of all, that petting a therapy dog before finals is supposed to reduce all your stress, and it works. It actually works. This is, I think, the fourth year that we've been here, and student finals are next week. Students will come. They will de-stress with petting a therapy dog. The dogs are trained, they're um, certified by an organization called Bright and Beautiful. We're all volunteers, we're also all the owners of these dogs. It's a wonderful, wonderful program. It's a win-win. The dogs love to be petted and the students get to enjoy a puppy without, you know, owning them. My name is Amy Clark, I'm one of the librarians here and um, I am the coordinator for this Therapy Dogs event for Anti-Stress Week. I feel great about the turnout. Um, it, it is usually one of the most popular events in the library. I, this is the first year that I am coordinating it and um, I'm really glad that we have as much interest as we do. <laughs> I am a biology major at Brookdale and I just finished my practical and I was so stressed out and I was supposed to go home and I was told that there were dogs coming to the library. So I immediately came back and I am so happy right now. I have like panic attacks all the time from schoolwork and stuff so this is like the best thing ever. So much special attention. I just think it's a fun experience for them. Uh, if you're a dog person, it's great. If you're not a dog person, you, it's hard to not walk by and still want to give them a pet. And it's, it's hopefully it'll get students to kind of relax the, at this uh, time of the year that can be very, very stressful for them. What do you like about humans? What do you think of this event on campus? <laughs> for nearly 50 years, Brookdale graduates have been shattering expectations. They transfer to Georgetown and Columbia University. They work at NASA, call Major League Baseball games, and defeat celebrity chefs. They prove again and again that a college is only as good as its success stories, and ours speak for themselves. This is Brookdale. This is college redefined. This is success reimagined. Well, if you don't have a library, you don't have access to books and electronic resources that you need to do to complete most of your assignments, that's one way we contribute to student success. We also have our tutoring center here, so if you need some additional support for your classes, you come right in and get it. Not to mention all the computers we have for everybody to get their work done.
or 6.30. Kayla Fletcher dribbling with the ball. As Brookdale now down 49-14. Here in the third quarter, six minutes left to go. Alexa Vreeland now up ahead to Malloy at the elbow. Malloy, the jumper, doesn't roll in. Brown, though, the rebound forces it up. It's short. And now Destiny McQueen comes away with it. Up ahead for McCollum, and McCollum lays it in with the left hand. So we had some audio difficulties. We apologize about that. Back inside the Collins Arena, 51-14. Brookdale has yet to score a point here in the third quarter as it has been all Harford. So it'll stay here with the Jersey Blues. Last kicked out of bounds by Ryan Holder there for the Owls. Yeah, and Tim, it's not just the third quarter. They haven't scored now in at least 10 minutes of game action. I've watched Harford here explode with this lead now. And Looks insurmountable, but you just have to see the effort, see if Brookdale can get something going offensively and try to make this game look a little bit better. And we want to emphasize this is a Division Three team playing a Division One team as we have a foul away from the ball on Brookdale. I think that they're going to hit Brianna Brown, or excuse me, Bri Brianna Bowen, rather, with a foul. That's her fifth foul, and she is gone. She had foul trouble earlier on in the first half. And she is now, with 5-12 remaining in the third, fouled out of the game. But as I was saying a moment ago, we try to emphasize that this is a Division Three team in Brookdale going up against a Division One team in Harford Community College. Shot there from Red in the lane doesn't fall. Now it's tipped back out to McCullum. Driving inside is Swearinger, and Swearinger off the back rim doesn't fall. Rebound to Red being swung around the perimeter. Porter with the floater on the right hand. Doesn't fall. Rebound though underneath. Put back up and in by Jewel Porter. And the Owls just relentless that time on the offensive glass coming away with three and four chances to score and you give a team that many chances eventually they're going to put one in the basket. Bethany Burton will check in at the next buzzer for Brookdale. She's now waiting at the scores table. Brookdale down 53-14, 420 remaining here in the third quarter. Kayla Fletcher now over to Alexa Vreeland. Vreeland to Malloy at the right elbow, and with two on the shot clock, there's a foul. As Brookdale got bailed out there as the shot clock was going to expire. It's a foul on Jewel Porter. That's the first personal on Porter, and the first on the Owls here in the third quarter. Out comes Kayla Fletcher for Brookdale. Going in is Gianna Errico. Bethany Burton also comes in as Caitlin Malloy goes out. Fresh 30 for Brookdale. Chikashi Andrews will inbound the Vreeland. Vreeland, the long three. It's an air ball, and the rebound pulled down by Swearinger. Swearinger, coast to coast, lays it in. Yeah, and the plan of attack for Harford has been a little bit different coming out in the second half, not settling as much for outside jumpers. They've been great in transition. They're getting to the basket with ease. Shikasha Andrews lost it. It was poked away by Ryan Holder. And now here come Harford up the floor. Swearinger the three, got it. 58-14, Brookdale still has not gotten a point here in the third quarter as we now have three minutes and 30 seconds to play. I remind you, coming up at the end of this game will be the Brookdale men's that will be taking the floor. Taking on Harford at approximately 7 Eastern time. And Kamari Brown double dribbled right in front of Coach Brunson. Brielle Palmer comes into the game for the Owls as Ryan Holder comes out. And Harford, I would say has this game in control at this point. Palmer, now over to Swearinger, and McCollum tra uh, traveled right at the top of the key. 
Yeah, rare turnover that time from Harford. They've been the aggressor in that department, forcing turnovers from Brookdale. And as you've mentioned in previous games, that's been an area they've excelled, taking the basketball away. And same has been the case here tonight. Yeah, we mentioned this at the beginning of the first half. In the last game that Harford played, Harford is 1-0 this year, Brookdale 0-3. Last game that Harford played was last week against Ann Arundel, one of the teams that they have inside their conference. They won that game 97-26, to but the bigger story was they forced 43 turnovers in that match. So they certainly know how to draw turnovers on their opponents. There's another turnover there by Brookdale as Alexis Espalda traveled. Yeah, and lately Brookdale just hasn't even been able to get a shot attempt because... They've been getting too many turnovers. Kayla Fletcher, or excuse me, that was McCollum with the three, rather, and it's no good from the left arc. Under three minutes to play, Bethany Burton back to Gianna Errico. Errico had it stripped away, and now here come the Owls with Swearinger taking it coast to coast. Actually, excuse me, this is Porter instead. Now this is Swearinger with the ball. And now McCollum going to try to set up the offense. Palmer the three, it's short, and the rebound to Erico, or excuse me, to Chikasha Andrews instead. So two minutes left, 58-14, Andrews the three from the right arc is no good, and the rebound to Red. Red, one on two to the hole, lays it in with the right hand. Yeah, and it was Andrews and Vreeland that she was able to slice right through there for that transition bucket. Just not much resistance. Coach Brunson wants to talk things over. And Coach Brunson will take a timeout with 1.44 remaining here in the third quarter. It'll be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here. Remember, Brookdale has not scored a point so far in this second half. They trailed Harford 39-14 at the end of the first half. But as it stands right now, 60 to 14, they still have not gotten a point on the board. And I'm sure that's what Coach Brunson is talking to his players about. Trying to get their heads back in the game if they can. And we apologize. We remember that we are having some audio difficulties. We've been able to correct those, but we are having some trouble also with our ticker at the bottom of the screen that has been a staple over the last several years. We'll try to get that back and working for you shortly. But as it stands right now, with a minute 44 remaining here in the third, 60 to 14, Harford is going to, at this point, cruise to a victory unless Brookdale is able to change things up here in the last 11 odd minutes that we have remaining in this game. Shikasha Andrews now with the ball. Over to Vreeland. Freeland now back over to Andrews with eight to shoot. Andrews threw it away. It's taken away by Chantel McCray-Cheeks. Cheeks to the hole. May have gotten away with an extra step, but she lays it in anyway. 62 to 14 now as we approach a minute left here in the third quarter. Air ball there from the corner by Espalda. Now we have a foul underneath the basket. I think this is going to go on Harford. Yeah, and one thing that Brookdale wants to see from Gianna Erica, one of only two players who's back from last season, is for her to be more aggressive, take a more of a scores mentality. A lot of times we see her get the ball, look to pass first. Rich Brunson wants her to become one of the focal points of this offense. So Gianna Erico at the line, the sophomore from Ocean Township, New Jersey, six foot. Gets Brookdale's first point as she makes one of the two from the line here in the second half. And now another traveling call as Janice Loney traveled with the basketball at the top of the key. Well, it looks like some of the men's players are starting to make their way into the Collins Arena here in the corner. Yeah, the men's game coming up at approximately 7 Eastern time. And we'll have that game live on Brookdale TV. Batted away out of bounds by Brielle Palmer. It'll stay here with Brookdale with 15 to shoot. But, you know, we've been here for some scores that have been, let's say, not the prettiest. And 
This one is one, but it's one that you excuse more than you otherwise would because, as we talked about, it's a big test facing an elite team in the Division One. Last touch by the Owls. It'll go back to Brookdale after Jewel Porter was not able to finish at the rim after bringing the ball all the way down the floor. Just couldn't finish when she got inside the paint. Gianna Erico will come out of the game for Brookdale along with Alexa Vreeland. Kamari Brown. Along with Alexis Espada come in for Brookdale. Caitlin Malloy has also checked in for the Jersey Blues. Here's Brown, double teamed, nowhere to go, loses it on the floor, battling with it, jump ball. Possession arrow will go back to Hartford. 15.7 seconds left here in the third quarter, so Hartford can hold for the final shot as the shot clock has been turned off. Janice Loney with the ball. Now over to Palmer. Palmer, cross-court pass to Swearinger. Tipped away, taken away by Brown with one. Brown puts it up at the buzzer. It doesn't roll in. And that'll end the third quarter. 62 to 15. The Ocean, or excuse me, the Harford Community College Owls lead at the end of three quarters of play. We'll take a break on Brookdale TV. Final quarter, final 10 minutes of play coming up right after this. Inside the Robert J. Collins Arena, Tim Kettlefam alongside Brian Gounsward for opening night here on Brookdale TV. The Brookdale men's and women's teams opening things up in the Collins Arena. Brookdale is 0-3 this year. They went on a three-game stretch out of state where they played teams such as ASA College, Baltimore City Community College, and then Roxbury Community College, which remember, if you think back to the Division Three NJCAA National Tournament that was held here in the Collins Arena a few years ago, back in 2016, Roxbury was the champions. So Brookdale has certainly not had a very easy start to their season, playing some teams that are very tough. And this evening, against a Division I team, Certainly has been the case as they are down 62 to 15 as we are in the final 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. Brown makes a nice move on her way to the basket and lays it in for Kamari Brown. Yeah, and even like you see a score like the game they played against Baltimore City, they lost 75 to 52, but that was a game they were competitive in for pretty much all the way, and it was the last five or six minutes that that one wound up getting away. Andrews. Drilling with the basketball for Brookdale. Puts up a three from the top of the key. It's way too strong, and the rebound tracked down by Cheeks. Cheeks up ahead inside the paint, and the nice layup is made by Loney. 64-17. A minute gone by in the fourth quarter. Nine minutes remaining in the game. Andrews with the ball over to Brown. Brown, the left arc three. Front rim no good. Burton fighting underneath it with the rebound. She was fighting with Cheeks there for Harford. The Owls come away with it, though. Now this is Brielle Palmer. Loney, another three. This one too strong. Rebound ripped out of the hands of Cheeks by Brown. A little testy there underneath the basket. It's a jump ball. Possession arrow points the Owls' way, so they'll keep it with a 
Shot clock that's at 28. Gianna Errico and Alexa Vreeland come in as Caitlin Malloy along with Alexis Espada come out for Brookdale. Back in play. Wine open is Vernegas and she hits the three. Yeah, nice passing. We've seen that from the start of this game for the Owls. They pass the ball well, that time on the out of bounds play, work it around the perimeter, find the open shooter, knock it down from long range. Erico gives it off to Burton. Burton, a nice jumper from the low block. So Bethany Burton gets on the board, 67-19, ahead of the field, a nice layup there by Cheeks at the other end. So now 69-19. Kamari Brown thought about going baseline. Now bounce pass, attempted to get it over to Andrews. It's stolen away up ahead. The nice layup is made by Loney again on the left side. So under eight minutes left to play, 71-19. Harford in control. Freeland is bumped along the baseline. It'll be a foul on Harford. It'll be away from the ball, so this will not be a shooting foul, although it might be. Freeland is going to the line, and the officials are going to say that she was in the act of shooting. The foul is on Janice, or Janice Loney, excuse me, number 10. It's the first on her and the first on Hartford here in the fourth quarter as Alexa Freeland knocks down the first free throw, one of the sophomores, 5-6 from Wall. Freeland, second shot on the way. She knocks them both down, 71-21. Harford still has a commanding lead. Foul underneath the basket. I believe they're going to get Bethany Burton, who made some contact with Janice Loney. So Loney, they will not say is in the act of shooting. Instead, the Owls will get it with 25 on the shot clock. They'll actually call the foul instead on Vreeland, on Alexa Vreeland, not Bethany Burt. So it'll be the third on Vreeland for Brookdale. Venegas inside to Porter. Porter wasn't able to make it from the foul line. And now a foul on Harford. They're going to get Chantel McRae-Cheeks with the foul. And that's the first personal on Cheeks. And the second on the Owls in the fourth quarter. At this point, though, I don't think that head coach Michael Cini is too concerned about fouls at this point as has, his team has a commanding lead. Andrews doesn't hit the three, but a nice rebound put back up and in by Bethany Burton underneath the basket. Yeah, and one thing that's strange about this Brookdale performance is of the few points they have scored in this game, Andrews has just not been much of a factor whatsoever. Long three is hit by Cheeks in the left arc. And now stolen away on the inbounds pass and laying in is Brielle Palmer. So a five point swing there for Harford and Coach Brunson on that note gonna take a timeout. 76 to 23. At least I thought Coach Brunson was gonna take a timeout. I'm not sure if this is a timeout or this is just resetting things. The officials are Looking around, I don't believe this was a timeout. The officials are trying to clarify that to both of the coaches. This was sort of a half a timeout. It was just enough for Brookdale to kind of catch their breath. So 76 to 23. 636 remaining here in this game. Brookdale makes some substitutions. Shailene Jones is on the floor. She's got the basketball. She throws it away to Venegas, and now Venegas' pass over to Loney rolls out of bounds, and they go back to Brookdale. And there is Coach Brunson, second year head coach, took this team all the way to the Region 19 title game, and they won it here at home. They went under the Nationals, and they are ranked eighth in Division Three play coming into this season. Yeah, and you look at last year's team, I mean, you have to say that he got the most out of the team he possibly could last year. A lot of times there were only seven, eight players at most that were available to play, and 
I mean, for them to be a 20-plus win team, to win the Region 19, to play in the national tournament, I mean, he did a great job with this group last year. Former Scarlet Knight from 1979 to 1983 and was a former men's assistant basketball coach on the men's team for several years under head coach it's Paul Chizak as Shaylee Jones, the freshman guard, 5-4 from Long Branch, doesn't hit the first foul shot from the line. They got Deara Weems for Hartford with the first, with her first personal and the team's third. Jones not able to hit either one from the line. 76-23, approaching six minutes left in this game. Venegas controlling it. Now inside to Alexis Moore, picked up by Cheeks, who puts it up on the basketboard, doesn't go in, and now another shot by Cheeks, counted, and the foul inside the paint. And we'll see who they'll call this foul on. This might now be Bethany Burton, as it'll send Chantel McCray Cheeks to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Nope, they're not going to call it on Burton. They're going to call it on Alexis Espada, as there were several Brookdale Jersey Blues underneath the basket there. So Chantel McCray Cheeks, the freshman guard from Washington, D.C., completes the three-point play. Hartford now has a 79-23 lead under six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. And again, we've said this a couple times tonight. We'll say it again. This is a Division I team in Hartford playing Brookdale Division III team. So that's why the score has become a little lopsided as the last 20 minutes of playing time. Remember, Brookdale trailed 39-14 at halftime, but ever since then it's been Hartford that has gone on a charge. Up ahead, a breakaway and a nice layup by Loney. Now 81-23. Jewel Porter will get ready to check in on the next buzzer. Brown, the shot from the corner, doesn't go. Cheeks now dumps it off to Venegas, and Hartford will try at least slowly try to set up their offense in no hurry here with five minutes left to play. And one thing we've learned about Brown is nearly come, coming away with a steal. Brown is right there, but this is the first game we've seen her play, and she's not shy about shooting. I mean, when she has the ball in her hands, she's looking to take it even from long range. So she could be another scoring option as this season unfolds. Yeah, Kamari Brown, number 14, the true freshman, 5'5", five five from Long Branch, New Jersey. One of the players that Coach Brunson is very excited about to see what she can do this year is Janice Lonely, Loney, excuse me, another shot from the perimeter. 83-23 now, Harford in command. Kaylee, excuse me, Kayla Fletcher. Over to Alexis Espalda, now this is Burton at the low block. Shot clock down to 10. This is Jones. Had it blocked away, but there's going to be a foul inside the paint. So Jones draws contact, and she will go to the line. We'll see who they'll get this on. This might be number 22, Alexis Moore, and it is for Harford. So Shaylee Jones, number five. As you see Coach Brunson looking on at the foul line. First one is good for Jones. Coming into the game, Caitlin Malloy, who will check in for Bethany Burton. A freshman replacing a freshman. There are only three sophomores on this entire team, and the outlier in that is Alexis Vreeland, who did not play last year, but nonetheless is still a sophomore. The only two returning players on this team, as we said earlier in the game, are Chikasha Andrews and Gianna Errico. Both of those players right now find themselves on the bench. Francesca Venegas now over to Diera Weems. Venegas into the corner for Loney for a three. It's an air ball out of bounds. Who touched it last? It'll be Hartford ball. 83 24, 405 remaining in the fourth quarter. As Hartford, most likely, unless something dramatic happens in these last four minutes, is going to improve to 2 0 this year. I think it would be a little bit beyond dramatic. And at but the line, oh, go ahead, Brian. You'd have to say brighter times are ahead for this team. They're going to play Certainly. teams they're 
certainly more accustomed to playing in their conference. You have Camden County coming up, Passaic after that, Middlesex. So all teams that they play on a yearly basis multiple times a year. And, you know, Brookdale's one of the better teams in this region, 19. They, they've had a really difficult start to the schedule, but they'll be back to playing good basketball before too long. Yeah, Camden and Passaic are on the road. That's this tu next Tuesday and then next Saturday, the 18th of November, before Brookdale comes back home. The next women's game is November the 21st against Middlesex County College. We'll have that game live here on BTV at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So Brookdale will certainly go back to playing some pl teams that they're more used to playing. There's a nice steal there by Jones. Or excuse me, that's Brown, rather. Over to Fletcher for a three. Brown is there with the rebound. Doesn't be, is not able to put it in, but now we have a foul underneath the basket as Caitlin Malloy was fouled after grabbing the rebound. After Kamari Brown was not able to finish after grabbing the rebound on the left block. So now Caitlin Malloy will go to the foul line. Try to put some points on the board. The 5'9 freshman from Ocean Township. It's the first down of a two-shot foul. The foul is on Jewel Porter. That's her third personal. And now, not that it really matters too much, but Harford is in the double bonus for the remainder of this game with 328 remaining. Malloy, one out of two from the line. Harford leads 20, or excuse me, 85 to 25. Deara Weems. Venegas now, the long two is off the back rim, no good. Now Weems, the weak side rebound. Shot clock resets for Harford. Porter, now over to Venegas. Venegas just simply lost the ball. Malloy down on the floor with Venegas. No whistle, still no whistle. Shot clock is not reset. Long three there by Loney is off the back rim, no good. And Kamari Brown gonna come away with the rebound. Brown, one on two, keeping it herself, going hard to the basket, missed the layup, and the rebound pulled down by Porter. Yeah, and I thought down this end of the floor, the last possession, that should have been a jump ball call, but the officials ruled it was not tied up for long enough. Porter, the long two, it's an air ball out of bounds, and Brown will let it fall as the officials blow it dead. 85-25, Hartford in front, 2.30 remaining here in this game. And if you're just joining us, we are having some trouble with our ticker at the bottom of the screen that usually gives us the timing and scoring. So we'll try to have that corrected as we go along. Shaylee Jones goes into the paint and has it cleanly rejected. And they're going to call it a jump ball. Coach Brunson not happy as he thought Jones was fouled in the paint. But possession arrow is pointing Brookdale's way, so they'll get the ball. The shot clock did not reset. It's at 12. Fletcher trying to get it into Brown, and she does. Shot clock down to 10. Malloy in the paint. The floater doesn't go. It's too strong. And the rebound tracked down in the corner by Weems. Two minutes to go. And Coach Michael Cini there in the black shirt on the sidelines. Telling his players just to take it easy, not trying to force anything here. Inside, a foul is committed as Alexis Moore tried to do one of the old hook shots in the paint. And she was fouled. She'll now go to the line for two shots. So with 147 remaining, Alexis Moore, the freshman from Germantown, Maryland, not, not able to hit the first foul attempt. Foul is on Caitlin Malloy. That's her second personal. And now the second foul shot for Moore. She missed them both. Offensive rebound by Porter. Porter comes away with it, and the Owls reset. Long three there by Weems is an air ball. Saved out of bounds. Porter the rebound, and she's fouled underneath the basket. Yeah, and that's just something Harford has been doing all game long. They've just been the aggressor. They've gotten every loose ball. That time Brookdale was just content letting it go out of bounds. Harford, even up by 60, decides to save it and try to add more here at the line. So Porter is not able to hit the first one from the line. 
Freshman forward from Baltimore, Maryland. Jewell's second attempt rattles out. Still an offensive rebound, now fought for underneath. Last touched out of bounds by Deara Weems, as that was Malloy and Weems battling for it underneath the baseline. Under 90 seconds left here in this game. 85-25. It has been all Hartford. Fletcher over to Brown. Now Brown over to Jones. Back to Brown with seven to shoot. Jones splits the defense, goes inside, and is fouled. So now Kamari Brown will go to the foul line for two shots with exactly a minute left. So Kamari Brown, the freshman guard, 5-5 from Long Branch, New Jersey. First shot is no good off the back rim. She'll try to hit the second one here. So she gets one out of two from the line. 85-26, under a minute left to play. Long through from the corner by Loney, who's been trying to hit that shot the last couple times down the floor. It doesn't fall. Weak side rebound by Weems. Shot clock didn't reset because the ball didn't hit the rim. It's now down to 13 for Harford. Venegas. Now back to Loney. Inside to Moore. Moore, the shot doesn't fall, and the rebound pulled down by Malloy for Brookdale. 28 seconds. Shot clock is down to 22. There's about a four-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Brookdale's working off of the shot clock as Malloy has it taken away, and now the shot clock turns off. So Malloy, I don't even think, is going to make an attempt here as they will come out and will just dribble out the clock with Venegas. It'll be an impressive win by a Division I team over a Division III team tonight in the Collins Arena. 85-26 to is the final score. Brookdale starts off the season 0-4. But again, we preface that by saying that some of the teams that they have played early on in this game, or early on in this season, I should say, are not necessarily the teams that they will be playing throughout the year, but certainly a tough effort for Brookdale tonight. Coach Brunson, I'm sure, not quite happy with the way his team has performed, but again, I give this team a lot of credit here, Brian. This is the Division I team going up against a Division III team. Brookdale's one of the very few teams that will play Division I schools during their regular season, almost as a way to kind of test themselves and see where they are as a program, but certainly not what they're looking at on a week-to-week -week basis, but I think they held up pretty well. There were certainly a lot of mistakes made, Harford's a very good team, but I think they held up pretty well against a Division One team. Yeah, early on, you know, they were definitely competitive in this game. It really got away more so in the second half. First half, you saw them do some pretty good things offensively. Going forward, though, you have to know that Chikasha Andrews is going to be a much bigger factor, and once that happens, this offense is going to play a lot more fluidly. You're just going to see a better brand of basketball both ends of the floor, and this team is, is going to be just fine. So Brookdale, again, they're 0-4, but they have yet to play a conference game in the Region 19 tour in Region 19 conference, I should say. That will happen later this week when they go on the road. The next time that you will see the women on the floor will be November 21st when they play against Middlesex County College. We'll have that game live at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So once again, Brookdale falls to Harford Community College, a team out of Maryland, by a final score of 85-26. to Ranked 20th in the country, the Owls are in Division I play in the NJCAA. Certainly a tough match, but Hartford gets the win. They are now 2-0, while Brookdale falls to 0-4. So that will do it for our coverage. The men's basketball team is warming up behind us. They will take to the floor next, as it will be the Brookdale men's team squaring off against the Hartford Community College Owls. Brian Gownsworth and I will have the call coming up here on BTV. Hi. I'm Laura McCullough, and I'm an Associate Professor of English in the Humanities Institute here at Brookdale Community College. I'm also a writer, I'm a poet, and an editor. I have a number of books out, and I work my butt off writing and teaching. Some of the things that we teach in the creative writing program here are a mixed genre creative writing class. It's an introductory class. We teach poetry, fiction, creative nonfiction, and screenwriting. There are two reasons to take classes in creative writing here at Brookdale. And the first is easy. If you want to be a writer 
we can help you figure out an educational and career path to do what you love and what you're talented at. But the other reason is because creative writing is about tapping into your imagination. It's about finding the creative person inside of yourself. And you don't have to be a writer to take creative writing. The number one attribute that businesses and organizations need and want today is thinking creatively. Looking at a problem and not saying it's either this or that, but finding a third way. So creative writing classes will help you to think more creatively. It will also help you to be more empathic, to understand yourself better, and to understand your place in a very changing, complex world. We love our creative writing students here. We work with them in class and out. And if you're at all interested in tapping into your creativity or finding out what kind of writer you are, come and take one of our classes or email one of us. The creative writing faculty here are all active writers, and we'd love to hear from you. Hi, I'm Lauren Watson here at the Brookdale Athletics 2016 Hall of Fame. We're here tonight to recognize the inductees into the Brookdale Athletic Hall of Fame. The Brookdale Community College Alumni Association is proud to sponsor the dinner tonight along with the athletic department and also with the Brookdale Community College Foundation. It's great to have all these Brookdale alum back together to celebrate each other and to celebrate their achievements while they were here at Brookdale. Oh, I think it's a great honor to, uh, for anybody to be inducted to any Hall of Fame. Uh, I mentioned Dennis McCaffrey. A uh, young guy like him, and he's already been inducted into, uh, into, tonight will be his fourth Hall of Fame that he's been inducted. And he's a very successful coach and a su successful uh, administrator up in Cranford. I want to just thank Brookdale to all the other inductees, the 1986 team for showing us how to do it. The current athletic director, just feeling his passion, his love and concern for Brookdale. I want to say thank you, Brookdale, to all the employees. Keep doing what you're doing. Because you got some kid that didn't really have a path, you got some kid that didn't really didn't know what he was going to do, be able to go to Villanova and have a great life now, and it's because of Brookdale, and I say thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be able to share this evening with all of the amazing inductees that are here, but especially with Bo. So, while I am proud of my accomplishments in my years playing softball here at Brookdale, the greatest of them all, for sure, is the honor of being inducted tonight next to you. You know how they say to have a nation of village to raise. This is my Jersey family village right here. On April 4th, on opening day in Baltimore, I will be on the field at Camden Yards in my tuxedo with my orange tie, and I will introduce the Orioles to a television audience of about 250,000 people. 